You guys ready to answer some questions today? I asked you guys for some questions on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and you guys delivered with like 200 plus questions. I don't know how many it was, but it was over 200. And there were some really good ones on there. So I saved some of them for some future, like longer form Chewy Rambles, but we've got a ton of questions. And I, I think that I might be able to do a couple different videos off of all these questions, because there's so many good ones. And there will be a chance for you guys doing a free t-shirt in the video. But with that said, let's get started with the questions. Ethan, mm, the tooth, what happened to it, right? I have a video on this. It was the very first random question video that we did. I'll link it somewhere in here and you can go check that out and then I'll tell you what happened to the tooth. What position did I struggle with most as a white belt? The same position that I struggled with the most up until black belt, which is being inside someone's guard. You know, other positions I always seem to sort of find my way through them, but being in someone's guard was the one that was the worst for me. I couldn't sit back on my heels. I couldn't do that until 2016, and that was after I went really deep into stretching and things like that and yoga, and that was when I was able to actually sit back. When I was able to sit back with that straight upright posture, I was able to defend a lot more and grip fight much more effectively for from inside the guard. Before that, because I couldn't sit back on my heels, I was always sort of perpetually leaning forward. And so if you're always leaning forward, your posture is almost always broken. So it was a very bad position for me. One of the things that I had to sort of come to realize is that that position is a, if you're on top, is a defensive position in grappling, right? Fighting's a little different, but in a grappling sense, you don't have submission options for the most part. The other person on the bottom does. And so you have to treat that as if you flipped it upside down and it's in the you're on the bottom of mount, right? It's a completely defensive position and you gotta make sure that you don't get submitted and work on just breaking the guard and taking your time. And that was what I had trouble with, was taking my time in that position. So that was my worst position as a white belt. Well, I don't use beard products per se, but I use things like argan oil and jojoba and coconut oil. And then I have all the, my girlfriend's really into the essential oil stuff. So we have like tea tree and peppermint and lavender and things like that around the house. House. And so I just mix them up myself and put them in there. For some of you guys out there, I've, I've gotten several messages about beards, right? Like, how do you deal with the beard in jiu-jitsu? Because it gets like when you're going, someone's going for a collar, right? And it gets tugged on. What do you do about that? Well, one is uh, typically I just give them the grip and just break it right off, right? So a lot of times if someone's going for a grip, I'll just lift up. But one of the things that I've found is that if my beard, if I put the oil in there and moisturize it, it seems to stop it from hurting as much because the beard's a little bit softer and the, the hairs aren't so rigid. So it seems to not be quite as, as rough on me. Simo, I did a video on this very subject. If you're doing a lot of MMA and you want to do more BJJ, then just do more Jiu Jitsu. Just go do that. But I we used to fight. That's why I got into Jiu Jitsu. But then and I found out that I really liked jiu-jitsu and MMA was kind of okay. So if you've kind of come to the same conclusion, then move where your heart tells you and go start doing more jiu-jitsu. Absolutely, so when I was powerlifting like a lot, I was by no means a competitive powerlifter, but I was strong for me and my weight was up to about 250, which was by far the heaviest I've ever been. And when I was doing this, I was getting stronger and I was chasing numbers and continuously pushing myself. And I was still trying to push myself in the gym, but when you start adding all that extra bulk on, which was not all muscle, it wasn't a good thing for my training, I started to become more sluggish and I wasn't able to move as effectively. The overtraining aspects, I was training too much and I found that I was getting injured a bit here and there. But also the, the mental thing, because now I'm torn, I'm not just lifting because I enjoy lifting, which is what I kind of do now, right? I lift to lift because I enjoy it and I also do it to sort of fight off some of the musc uh, mus <laughs> <I said muscles. laughs> muscular imbalances that I have. So I was chasing numbers, pushing myself to do more and more, and then at the same time I'm still doing jiu-jitsu, but my mind's torn because I'm really hung up with the numbers, but at the same time I really want to be good at jiu-jitsu, so I was split. And I found that in my life I cannot dedicate myself physically to something like really head on more than one thing at a time. And so to me, I wanted to focus on one thing and that was jiu-jitsu and so I had to kind of let that me being a really strong person. I mean, it's not that I'm not weak by any means, but you just had to kind of let some of those numbers go and I had to let that just sort of slide by because it was getting in the way. I'm trying to think, I, did, I just don't think you can. A year or less, obviously you're asking this in a joke, but that'd be like the lamest martial art ever. You get to the black belt, like this, this big thing, and you get there in a year, it's lame. It'd be the worst. Yeah. So, get lots of money and find an instructor that's hard up for money, pay them a bunch of money, and get your black belt, and make sure that you never roll in a tournament, and you never try to roll at another gym because you'll get absolutely obliterated. What's the best way to train leg locks? You train them like you do any other position, safely and consistently. So what's my favorite thing? A sneaky submission, an unexpected sweep, or you know, executing a new setup? That's a good question. I'm gonna combine two of them together. I'm gonna combine unexpected sweep with executing a new setup, and I'm gonna combine them in a way where it's an unexpected new setup for me. With jiu-jitsu, especially if you, as you start to learn how to play more and more, you basically get rid of the reservation of not trying stuff because you don't know what you're doing, and sometimes you just be like, well, let's see what happens if I grab this or do this. That's one of my favorite things is when I'm playing around with a new movement, and I do something, and then immediately after I look at it 
and like after the roll's over or something like that, a lot of times I hit it in a roll or maybe during a drilling session, I'll have to like go back to my partner and say, hey, l let me try something real quick. Let me see if I can do this again. And I have to do it a couple times and write notes down on it so I don't forget it. But that's my favorite because then it's like, if you get like some unexpected new, you know, move or technique that you can add into your game, it's so cool because you don't, you, I know that it's gonna send me in different directions that I can't expect, you know, because again, it, it, it just diverted me off my path, right? I was moving along and then all of a sudden, I found this new move in my game and it's gonna send me off in some different direction. And I always love that because I know, that, you know, from training long enough, I know that I'm gonna come out with all kinds of new stuff because of that unexpected new technique that I was able to bring into my game just from playing around with different techniques. Sometimes. Aaron, I have absolutely no liabilities. <laughs> it's funny you ask that. We will actually have some no liability shirts coming out. There will be a uh, Jiu Jitsu version and a Chad Hardy version. That started back here where we did a comment video, him, Adam, and I, and you know, one of the guys said something about no liabilities and he just kind of stuck. Let's do this. If you guys would like to win a no liabilities t shirt, comment down below. And when you comment down below, Chad and I will go through and we'll pick out one for a Chad Hardy shirt, one for a Jiu Jitsu shirt, and then we'll also put probably down there in the links somewhere if you guys wanna get one, we'll put some links down there so you can you know get your Chad Hardy Jiu Jitsu no liability shirt. We'll probably do like a limited order on them. So if you guys wanna get one, check below, and you can win a free t-shirt by commenting. Can I make a Wookiee noise? Not really, but here, I'll try. <laughs> That sounds, that sounds kind of like a whale. <laughs> Boom! Just doing whale noises. <laughs> no, I can't make a wookie noise. Favorite craft beer. There's a brewery down in Lexington called Country Boy, and they have one called Shotgun Wedding. It's a vanilla porter. It's really good with something salty, like a burger. So if you have like a burger and a beer, right? It has that, that little sweetness of vanilla in it. It's really good. So that's probably my favorite one. Besides that, a lot of times the only beer that I drink is one of our guys here in the gym, Joe. He makes really great beer. Like it's really, really good. Some of the best beer I've ever had. And I, I don't drink that much, but um, that's probably my favorite craft beer. All time favorite submission? It's tough, it either it's a rear naked choke or a Kimura. Which one have I hit more? Kimuras. As far as the gear no gi, I'm not dependent upon a gi. From a blue belt, I think I was listening to, or uh, excuse me, reading uh, an interview done with Dean Lister and he was talking about where he trains in gi, but he does, he tries to make sure that all his moves are gi or no gi. And so to me, that was like, that seems so smart. And so I never really got too wrapped up in any technique that was really gi dependent this way I, my jiu-jitsu was able to translate you know well to both because back you know when I first started to, tournaments weren't as numerous as they are now like you guys are so darn lucky where if you're coming up and you want to compete a lot there's like a tournament going every weekend back when I was you know training here in the Midwest and you know in the East Coast there'd be maybe a tournament every three months or four months and so like you know when you, when it came time to compete you just did everything you could because you wanted to get as much experience as possible and another thing is that all the guys that got into jiu-jitsu back when I started we all got into it because we wanted to fight right we all wanted to be able to fight so you know it was cool to know the gi stuff and it was we, we we had to know the gi like it wasn't even an option but it was still one of those things where we were all doing it because at some point we wanted to either fight in a you know in a ring or we just wanted to understand how to fight with jiu-jitsu Steve you know who's number one America <laughs> Isn't that the most annoying thing when you tell someone you do jujitsu and they're like, oh man, is that like, how's that jujitsu stuff? I used to work in a, uh, uh, an office with like a bunch of like IT related stuff. Everybody would come up and they would say, hey man, how's it, how's your jujitsu going? And it wasn't until I came in one day and I had a black eye, right? So I came to the office and again, it's, it's, it's quiet. We're all sitting in cubicles and stuff and like pecking away and stuff. And I come with a black eye and my supervisor is going like, man, what, what is that going? What, what happened to you? I was like, oh, I was training for a fight that it, the phone's ringing, one moment. Derby City Mixed Martial Arts, this is Nick, how can I help you? Hey, you're welcome, brother. Have a good day. So anyway, so my manager comes up and he sees my eye and he's like, he's like, what happened to you? And so I sent him to a YouTube video of me with one of my old fights. He's like, so that's what you do? Oh, okay. So maybe if you, all your buddies and stuff like that or your coworkers are saying like, what is that karate stuff you do? Like show them a match or something and maybe it'll give them a better perspective of what's going on. If you could fight 100 duck sized Chad Hardys or one Chad Hardy sized duck, who would you fight? Um, I'll take, one Chad Hardy sized duck because if I had a hundred little like 
little mini chads going. One of those little bastards is going to choke me eventually. It's a hundred of them. I can only give so many of them the boot. <laughs> so I would take the one si Chad Hardy sized duck. I don't know how you have an embarrassing moment in jiu-jitsu because jiu-jitsu is sort of a sport or a martial art that's predicated on you doing, to having mistakes. You have to kind of have a certain level of trust with everybody around you to make mistakes. I mean, I guess you could like poop your pants or something, you know, maybe that'd be, that'd be embarrassing, but I've never done that. But as far as me doing something and screwing up and then being embarrassed about it, I've never had that. You guys, thanks for watching. And again, if you want to win a free t-shirt, comment down below. And again, thank you all you guys that sent in all those questions, because there's a bunch. And again, if your question was not answered, I will try to answer answered again in another video like this, or some of those questions were really good and I would like to address them in a longer form video, whether it be for a technique or uh, one of the Chewy style rambles. And uh, as always guys, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you next time.